walam yafsuk and neither committed any sin Fus, uh, uh, fusuk refers to any sin so uh, avoiding any acts of sexuality uh, and avoiding any sin and he did perform hajj for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and during hajj he did not do these things he will return from his hajj as the day he was born by his mother so on the day we are born we are sinless we have nothing on our bodies nothing on our record it's clean everything is clean we start from there likewise when you perform hajj purely for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you don't do mistakes and you perform it correctly you get your sins washed away from your record also major sins major sins people do tawbah in hajj when you're doing hajj you say oh allah forgive me oh allah forgive my sins major minor and so you're making tawbah so allah will forgive your major sins as well <coughs> number 251 man sa'ala allah ash-shahada bi sidq whoever asked for allah the death of a martyr truthfully ballaghahu allah manazil ash-shuhada allah will make him reach the ranks of martyrs wa imma ta'ala firashi even if he died on his bed so even if someone died on his bed uh, and did not ever participate in, and fought in the battlefield but he had the true wish to allah that oh allah allow me to die as a martyr then he will he will be reaching the rank of martyrs 252 man kana lahu sha'run falyukrimhu rawahu abu dawood whoever has hair he should honor his hair sha'r is hair so uh, this is a reference to beard and the head hair some people like to keep long hair and if you are one of those people who like to keep long hair make sure you honor your hair how do you honor your hair you take care of them you don't just let your hair fall here and there and you don't take care of your hair you don't shampoo them and condition them all those things these are things that becomes the rights of hair you have to keep you look after your hair likewise beard if you have beard make sure you're looking after your beard you're not allowing your beard to you know go right and left and uh, <laughs> let it grow so long that it it becomes like you know you never take care of your hair That, that that's not the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. What about this uh, dreadlocks as of many muslims? What's that? Dreadlocks. dreadlocks. What's that? Fine. You know like the Jamaican people have those or some african americans have those weaves. Yeah, like weaves dreadlocks. Uh, For I mean, men no. Mm-hmm. Men should not listen that. that we run into, you know, me. So they, you should tell them this is dreadlocks. this yeah. this is not this is not right. Mm-hmm. Number 253. Man ihtabasa farasan fi sabilillah. Whoever kept a horse in the path of Allah, imanam billah, believing in Allah, wa tasdiqan bi wa'di, and confirming the promise by Allah, fa inna shib'ahu wa riyahu wa rawthahu wa bawlahu fi mizanihi yawm al-qiyamah, rawahu al-Bukhari. Then, whatever, whatever this horse will eat, and whatever this horse will drink, and even the feces of this horse, and even the urine of this horse will be weighed on the in the scale of this person on the day of judgment so whatever you will feed this horse the food and whatever you will give this water uh, the water uh, to this horse to drink because you're doing it for the sake of allah you're you're raising this horse you're keeping this horse you're maintaining this horse for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the path of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be used in the path of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala So the reward of that is so much that Allah will count even the urine and the feces and the food and the water that this horse will use in his entire life on the day of judgment all of that will be put into the scale and Allah will weigh it in your scale of good deeds. So you're raising the horse in the name of Allah like for for like what for for you know uh, using it in the path of Allah it, it wouldn't apply today Yeah. because horses are not really used for that purpose now. Cause, cause, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like like raising a ferrari that's good yeah. that's good yeah, you should take it to tabli right yeah, yeah. 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 
yeah, put put the uh, put on that card the sticker fi sabil illa. Allah 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 Another uh, another kind of uh, chapter as previous hadith is. Number 254. When your good deeds please you. And your bad deeds make you feel bad and make you feel guilty. Then you are a true believer. As long as you still have this sense in, alive in your heart. That when you do something good, you feel good. Alhamdulillah, I pray. Alhamdulillah, I give charity. Alhamdulillah, I help that person. You feel good. When you've done something good, you feel good in your heart. Likewise, if you do something bad, you feel bad in your heart. Oh, I feel so bad. I feel so, such burden on my heart that I did that. That means you still have Iman alive in your heart and you're a true mu'min. When a time comes that even you don't have a feeling for that anymore, you don't feel good on your good deeds, you don't feel bad on your bad deeds, that means you have killed your sense which, were keep, which was keeping your iman alive. Number 255. When the matter is assigned to those people who are not worthy of it, then wait for the Day of Judgment. This hadith is referring to those people coming into the position of leadership, those who are not worthy of being leaders. Like, uh, you, can, you can apply to the highest level, and you can apply to the lowest level. Highest level, like president. Someone who is not worthy of being president, qualified of being president, but he's still the president. He's still the leader of the people. He's still the king, or he's still the prime minister. That means you should wait for the Day of Judgment because one of the signs of the Day of Judgment is that those people who are not worthy of being leaders, they will become the leaders. Like Bashar, Al-Assad or other people who are not worthy of being the leaders, they are the leaders. <clears throat> and you can apply to the lower level as well uh, in, in your masjid or in your school or in your business or other places. Those people who are not worthy of being the uh, uh, leaders and in charge those are the people in, in charge. And that's unfortunately the case with many masajid today in America. People who are in the leadership position in the board or the president or the vice president, those people are the third class people. They don't know what they're doing. All they care about is, oh, I'm the president or I'm the vice president or I'm the board member or I founded this or I did that, I did that. I'm the committee chairman. I'm the chairman of that committee. I'm the chairman of that committee. And... When it comes to doing something, they, do, they don't do anything. Number 256. When Allah decides that someone should die at a certain place on earth, then Allah creates a need for him in that place. So let's say, for example, you were to die in Malaysia. And you're still sitting in America. Allah will create a need for you to be in Malaysia at your appointed time. And when that time comes, you will be in Malaysia. There is a story. Uh, in, in the time of Dawood, he was sitting with his people in his majlis. And all of a sudden, he sees the angel of death appear. And the angel of death is gazing upon someone. He's you know, looking at someone. And Dawood al-Islam calls the angel of death and he asks him, Why are you scaring my person? Why are you looking at him like that? So the angel of death says, I'm wondering, this person is supposed to die in two hours or four hours uh, at that place, which is so far away. I'm wondering how is he going to get there? So in the meantime, that person comes to Dawood al-Islam. He said, I'm really scared uh, and I, wanna, I don't want to be here. I want to be far away from this place. So why don't you make arrangement from, for me, uh, order the wind, that the wind should uh, fly me and take me to that place. 
And that was exactly the place where he was supposed to die. So uh, Dawood al Islam, he says, okay, as you wish. So he orders the wind, and the wind takes him into that place far away. And he gets there, and as he gets there, the angel of death comes over there and takes the soul. Is it Dawood or Sayyidina Sulaiman Because Sulaiman is the one that commanded. Yeah, it, it could be Sulaiman But I, I, I'm, uh, I'm mean, not sure whether it was Sulaiman yeah, or Dawood al Islam. So, Allah creates the need for that person to be in that place. Even if, if you were thinking in your mind, oh, I'm going there for this reason. But who knows, you're going there because your death is supposed to come over there. No, Number... If you, if you, let's say, you know when some people go to Hajj or Umrah, they say, oh, I want to die in uh, Medina, so I can yeah. buried. So, if they really want that, could God do that to change? Like they were supposed to die somewhere else, no. but they've been praying... Oh, I want to die with Allah has Allah has already written everything. So that's not true. Yeah. But you will get reward for your dua. You should never never stop praying. Two fifty seven. إِذَا لَبِسْتُمْ وَإِذَا تَوَضَّعْتُمْ فَبْدَأُوا بِمَيَامِنِكُمْ رواه أحمد. When you wear your clothes, libas, libas means clothes, dress. When you wear your clothes, and when you make wudu, then start from your right side. So when you start wearing your shoes or your clothes or uh, anything that has both sides, the left side and the right side, then start with the right side. If something only has, you know, one side, then that doesn't matter. But if something has two sides, like our shirt has two sides, the right side and the left side. Our shalwar, our pants have two sides, the right side and the left side. So you should start with the right side and then the left side. And likewise, when you make wudu, so uh, when we're making wudu and washing hands, we should wash the right arm first and then left arm. When, you, when we're washing the feet, right foot first and the left foot second. Yeah, when you take it off, you go with vice versa? Yes, vice versa. Okay. Number 258. إِذَا وُضِعَ الطَّعَامُ When the food is placed, then, take, then remove your shoes. فَإِنَّهُ أَرْبَحُ لِأَقْدَامِكُمْ رَوَاهُ الدَّارَمِي Because it is more comfortable for your feet that you remove your shoes. So if you are... Uh, and that applies uh, mostly when you are sitting on the floor. If you're going to eat on the floor and you still have your shoes on, it's, it's, it's uncomfortable for yourself. So it is an advice of the Prophet It is not an order. It is not a command. It is an advice of the Prophet ﷺ, and look how kind is the advice of the Prophet ﷺ, that he is even considering our own comfort. So he's saying that if you are going to sit on the floor and eat food, then remove your shoes because it is better for your feet and it is more comfortable for you to sit. If you don't, then the trouble is yours. Number 259. إِذَا كُنْتُمْ ثَلَاثَةَ دُونَ الْآخَرَ when you are a group of three people, then two people should not start whispering to each other, leaving out the third one. Hatta until you have mingled with other people, with a larger group. Min ajli an yuhzinahu. This is so the other person does not get uh, sad. Because sometimes when you are only three people and two people start whispering in the ears of each other, the third person begins to think, Maybe they're talking about me. That's what they're whispering. Otherwise, they wouldn't be whispering. So it makes him sad. So the Prophet ﷺ, you know, doesn't like that uh, anything should be done to make another person sad. Number 256, uh, 260. When you cook gravy, maraqa, gravy, like uh, what we call salam. When you cook gravy, فَأَكْثِرْ مَا أَهَا Then increase the water in gravy. Why? وَتَعَاهَ جِيرَانًا So you can share some with your neighbor. You don't have to share meat or chicken, but at least give some, some gravy to your neighbor by putting, adding some more water into that food. Uh, you will have extra gravy and you can share that with your neighbor. So looking after your neighbor. رواه مسلم Number 261. When you make wudu, then make khilal between 
the fingers of your hand and the, and the toes of your feet. What is khilal? You go like this. You put the fingers of one hand into the fingers of the other hand. This is khilal. Okay? And when you are washing your feet, likewise, use your pinky and, uh, and go in between the toes as well. So the space in between the fingers and in between the toes get wet as well. Is that okay to use that the pinky finger to use your other huh? fingers? Is that okay to use other fingers than the pinky? That's fine. That's fine. 262. إِذَا لَمْ تَسْتَحِي فَاصْنَعْ مَا شِئْتَ رَوَاهُ الْبُخَارِ When you don't when you don't have modesty anymore, when you don't have any uh, shame anymore, then do as you wish. Shame is one thing that keeps your iman alive. There are many things that we won't do because people will ashamed us. People will say, shame on you, shame on you. But when there is no shame, then you can do whatever. Then you won't worry about people, you won't worry about anything. And you will think that, whatever, you know, I don't care about people. When you don't care about people, that's when you, the shame dies. And that's when you do many things that you wouldn't have done if there was shame in you. Number 265. When one of you eats, then he should eat with the right hand. شَرِبَ And when he drinks, فَلْيَشْرَبْ بِيَمِينِ Then he should drink with the right hand. So eating, drinking for a Muslim should be done with the right hand, not with the left hand. If someone only has left hand, then obviously that's the only hand they can eat. Huh? Two sixty-four. إذا أَحَدُكُمْ فَلْيَبْدَأْ بِالْأُمْنَةِ So, uh, in the previous, in two fifty-seven, we learned when you wear something, then uh, then begin with the right. Now we're talking about when you re- uh, when you are putting your shoes on. إذا تَعَلَ أَحَدُكُمْ When you put your shoes on, then begin with the right foot. وَإِذَا نَزَعَ And when you remove your shoes, then begin with the left. لِتَكُونِ الْيُمْنَ أَوَّلَهُمَا تُنْعَلْ وَآخِرَهُمَا تُنْزَعَ So the right foot is the one that is worn first and removed after. رواه البخاري ومسلم Number 265 إِذَا دَخَلَ أَحَدُكُمُ الْمَسْجِدِ فَلْيَرْكَعْ رَكَعَتَيْنِ قَبْلَ أَنْ يَجْلِسِ رواه البخاري ومسلم When one of you enters the masjid, then pray two rak'ah. This is tahiyyatul masjid. Two nafal. Before you sit down. Before he sits down, he should pray two rak'ah and that is tahiyyatul masjid. Number 266. When one of you is gone for too long from his family, then he should not show up at the door at night time. Why? Because you cannot alert your family that I'm coming. If you can alert your family, like in our case, in modern times, you can send an email, you can call, you can send a text message that, oh, I'll be there at 12 a.m. or I'll be there at 1 a.m. or I'll be there at 11 p.m. Then that's fine. The whole, pur- the, the whole purpose behind this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ is to alert the family. Because if you don't alert the family and you show up at the door, and you find out, oh, your family is dirty, and sh- your wife was not taking care of herself. Because when, when the husband is away, right. you know, they don't like to, you know, pay too much, too much attention to makeup and all those things. So for that reason, the Prophet ﷺ doesn't want you to see your wife in a, in a condition that doesn't make you happy. Be scared. Yeah. That's the whole goal. So if you can inform your wife that, oh, I'll be there at 11 p.m. tonight, or I'll be there 1 a.m. or 2 a.m., then that's fine. Okay? And the word yatruq comes from the same which, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, was sama'i wa tariq. Tariq means someone who appears at night time. And tariq is a reference to a star that shows up at night time. A bright star. And it's funny, you said about that, uh, that star, that sheikh, it really, you know, I mean, it knocks on someone knocking the door. Yeah. I've seen it, you know, I mean, it You have? Oh, yeah. I, was, I wrote an article about it. Mashallah. I've seen it. Subhanallah, it knocks as if someone knocking the door like this. Barakallah. Uh, 
ما شاء الله الله عليك الله وكرمك 267 اذا دخلتم على المريض فنفسوا له في اجله when you enter upon a sick person then give him some uh, hope in his in his uh, expiration in his death don't don't tell him or oh, you're going to die today you're going to die tomorrow tell him you know inshallah you will live allah will give you longer life فَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ لَا يَرُدُّ شَيْئًا وَيُطِيبُ مِنْ نَفْسِهِ Now, giving him hope is not going to change what's already going to happen, but it will make him happy that, oh, people still want me, people still, you know, pray for me. He will die when the time comes. You're not going to stop it. But when you say things like, you know, inshallah, you will live, inshallah, you'll get better, it makes him happy. And yeah, some people, they go, you know, my uncle died with the same ذكر بعض المغيبات التي اخبر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بها وظهرت بعد وفاته صلوات الله وسلامه عليه now this in this chapter we're going to learn about some a hadith that talk about the unseen things, that, that talk about the predictions that the Prophet ﷺ made in his life. And, they, and the Prophet ﷺ told us about those, and they did happen after the death of the Prophet ﷺ. So let's see. Number one. قَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ وَهُوَ السَّيِّدُ الصَّادِقِينَ The Prophet ﷺ said, and he is the leader, the chief of all the truthful people. لَا يَزَالُ مِنْ أُمَّتِي أُمَّةٌ in my ummah, there will always be a group which will stand by the orders of Allah, which will hold firmly to the, to the will and to the order of Allah. Those who will try to disgrace them will not harm them. And neither those who oppose them will not harm them. Until the order of Allah, the judgment of Allah will come, and they will be on this condition. This is a prediction to the fact that in the Ummah of the Prophet ﷺ, there will always be a group that's on the right path. And no one who, will, who's, who tries to move them, who tries to motivate them to stray away from the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ will succeed. And no one will be able to succeed even if they oppose them. So the Prophet ﷺ predicted that and that happened after his life and continues to happen. And there will always be a group. If it's small, it's small. If it's big, it's big. But there will always be a group in the Ummah of the Prophet ﷺ that remains firm on the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ and no one, will tr- no one can uh, make them move away from the Sunnah. How do we know who they are? Just compare them, compare them to the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Number two. وَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ يَكُونُ فِي آخِرِ الزَّمَانِ دَجَّالُونَ كَذَّابُونَ In the last ages... There will be big liars. Dajjal is also a liar, someone who lies, and Kazab is also a liar. Dajjal means big liar. Dajjaluna Kazabun, big liars, big Dajjal, liar Dajjal. Yatunakum mil ahadith, they will bring to you a hadith, bima lam tasma'u, of which you have not heard, neither your ancestors heard. So they will fabricate a hadith. And that's what a liar person does. That's what a Dajjal would do. He will say, oh, this is what the Prophet ﷺ did. Or he said. And there are people like the Dajjal like these even today. One Dajjal will come at the end when Isa ﷺ will come. But there have been Dajjal throughout the periods. In the first century, there was Musaylima Kadhab. In the second century, in the third century, in the fourth century. Every century, there was one or more Dajjal. Sometimes all the people hear about that Dajjal and sometimes only a region, only a certain region uh, hears about it. And recently I heard about, there's another person in Yemen who claims to be Mahdi. And he's also Dajjal. He's also a Kadda. So Dajjal would always be from Muslim community or could they be from non-Muslim? No, they, these kind of Dajjals, they always... Dajjal is someone who tells you I'm Muslim but he's doing something wrong. Okay, okay. Yeah. It's, not, so it's not a kafir who will come to you and say, Oh, I'm the Jal. That the Jal is the final the Jal, the last the Jal. So, 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 so just to, to be clear, for, for some people, some, 
some advocating that uh, Al Mahdi is some already come and they, they say that the Imam is the Mahdi. Mm. Some of them they say that's that wrong. The Messiah already came and their Imam is. Yeah, Imam. all of that is Dalal. That's a Dalal. All, all of that Dalal. So this is who we are. Yes, error, clear error. So how would we know who's the right Mahdi? When the time comes, we'll find out. Oh, okay. Yeah. The ulama we might will not all. Be around to find out. Yeah, we might not be around. That's the thing. But yeah. all the ulama who are the right ulama, the, 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 the true ulama, yeah. they will immediately recognize the Mahdi, alayhi salam, and they will follow him. They will be behind him. Okay. So the Prophet ﷺ said when these Dajjal and these liars, when they bring some hadith to you that you have not heard and your parents have not, your ancestors have not heard and it's fabricated. فَإِيَّاكُمْ وَإِيَّاهُمْ Then stay away from them and keep yourself away from them. لَا يُضِلُّونَكُمْ وَلَا يَفْتِنُونَكُمْ If you keep yourself away from them, they will not be able to misguide you and they will not be able to uh, uh, test you in trials. Number three. وَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ خَيْرُ النَّاسِ قَرْنِي The Prophet وسلم, said, The best time and the best period is my period in which I lived. Then the second best period is the period in which my companions lived, the Sahaba. Then the third best period is the period after the Sahaba, in which the students of the Sahaba, Tabi'een, they lived. Then there will come a time that people will come their testimony will be before their oath and their oath will be before their testimony. So they will say, Wallahi ashhadu. I swear by Allah, I testify. Or ashhadu wallahi. So liars, this is liars do. Liars take oath in the name of Allah more than other people. Because they want to convince you. And there's no way to convince him but to use the name of Allah. And liars do that. So he knew. He already predicted that. Yes, he already... That's what... This whole chapter... This whole chapter is about those hadith in which the Prophet ﷺ made predictions. That have... Most of them have already come true. وَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ لَيَأْتِيَنَّ عَلَى النَّاسِ زَمَانٌ A time will come upon people. لَا يَبْقَى أَحَدٌ no one will be left behind illa akal riba except that he has eaten riba. He has eaten usury. If he did not eat it, asabahu min bukhari, then the smoke of that will reach him. What is the meaning of this? The riba or interest or usury will become so common in the society then literally every person is involved somehow. Right. Even if you're not directly involved, indirectly you're involved. And look at us. We are. Even if, you don't, even if we don't have a savings account, even if we did not invest in CDs and all those products, we're still involved because our money is in the bank and the bank is using that money in the trust. Right, right, right. So uh, that's what the Prophet meant that even if someone is not eating it, if someone is not uh, involved in it, still... He is in the smoke of that. Asalahum in Bukhari. Wa qala nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam inna deena bada'a gharibaan. He said that the religion, it started as a strange religion, as a strange thing. Wa sayyaudu kama bada'a. And it will return to be strange at one point. Fatuba lil gharaba. And good news is for the strangers. Those who stick to the religion, those who hold firmly to Islam, there's a good news for them. And who are those strangers? Who are those people who stick firmly to the religion of Islam? Those are the people who fix or correct that which people have corrupted. So whatever people have corrupted from the teachings of the Prophet ﷺ, these people go and fix it. Like, you know, if you, if you see a really heavy truck that's breaking the road and moving on, moving on, and then be behind, there's a, there's a truck that's repairing the patches, that's repair, fixing the road, 
It's like that. So people have corrupted the religion, but these people, they come along and they keep fixing it. They keep telling them, no, 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 this is wrong, this is right, this is wrong, this is right. They keep correcting it and they keep fixing it. What does the way of Tuba mean? Tuba, good news. Glad tidings. And the Prophet said, This knowledge, the knowledge of deen, will be carried by the just heirs of the scholars in every time. Every time one scholar passes away, a good scholar will be behind that scholar who will take the flag and move on. And then, so the torch of knowledge will never fall. It will always be passed from one generation, from one scholar to another scholar to another scholar. It will always be carried by the right people. And these right scholars, they will negate or remove the, uh, uh, the distortion of extremists. Remember the word extremist. Tahrif al ghalin Ghalin are the extremists. And extremists have always tried to change the things in their favor. But these scholars will come behind and they will, they will fix it. And they will keep the, the distortion by the extremists away from the religion. They will tell people, no, no, this is extremist. This is extremism. This is not right. This is not from the sunnah of the Prophet Wa intihal al And the, the, the changes made by the batil people, the, uh, the wrong people, the liars, الجاهلين, and the interpretation of ignorant people. Ignorant people will start interpreting like nowadays, people who have no in-depth understanding of religion, but they start interpreting, oh, in my opinion, the, uh, Islam should be like this. In my opinion, this ayah means this. And these scholars will remove that and will keep it out of the religion. They will say, no, no, this is just his opinion. It's not religion. Rawahul Bayhiqi fi kitab al mudkhar Waqal al Nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Walladhi nafsi biyadi The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to swear in these words. I swear by the one in whose hand is my life. He always swore in these words. Walladhi nafsi biyadi I swear by the one. And who's that one? Allah. I swear by Allah in whose hand is my life. La tadhabu dunya the world will not end until a day will come upon people the killer will not know yeah, it should be the killer will not know why he killed and the, and the person who was killed will not know why he was killed so the killer doesn't know why he's killing and the kill doesn't know why he's being killed. And this is what's happening now. Look at the people who are sh being shot nowadays. Every, every week, every month, there's shooting in school, there's shooting in Walmart, there's shooting here, there's shooting there. And the killer doesn't know why he's killing and the people who are dying, they don't know why they're being dying. What did they do for which they're being dying? Okay, for, so the Prophet ﷺ was asked, Kay Ya Rasulullah, how is that going to happen? Why would it, would it happen? The Prophet ﷺ said, Al-Haraj. This is the result of Haraj. And what, uh, what is Haraj will be explained in the next hadith, inshallah. So the Prophet ﷺ said, it is happening because of Haraj. Al-Qatilu wa al maqtulu fin nar. And in these cases, for some reason, the killer and the one who is being killed are both going in the fire. Allah Alam. Waqala Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And in other hadith, the reason why the the Prophet ﷺ said, the reason why, you know, the Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, we understand why the killer is going to hellfire, but why the killed is going to hellfire? The Prophet ﷺ said, because he was going to kill him if he lived. Oh, okay, okay. So the guy who died was going to kill him. Yeah, yeah. So intention. Number nine. Number eight. وَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم, The Prophet ﷺ said, يَتَقَارَبُ zaman." Close to the day of judgment or close to the end of time, the time will get close to each other. Like, like hours will go like minutes, months will go like weeks, 
and years will go like months, and that's happening right now. The time is going so fast, we don't feel it. Like Ramadan is coming in less than two weeks, alhamdulillah, and it feels like Ramadan was just a month back. We just finished one Ramadan, and now we're going into next Ramadan, inshallah. So the year will feel like a month, a month will feel like a week, a week will feel like a day, a day will feel like an hour, an hour will feel like a minute. That's what the hadith says. وَيُقْبَضُ الْعِلْمِ And close, near the day of, uh, near the final hour, near the final day, the knowledge of deen will be taken away. وَتَلْحَرُ fitan, And the trials will appear. And what are the trials? The fightings, the killings, and all, all these are fitan. All these are fitna. وَيُلْقَ mm. And people will become stingy. وَيَكْثُرُ الْحَرَجِ And haraj will become in abundance or rampant. Qalu, woman haraj. The Sahaba asked, Ya Rasulullah, what is haraj? He said, Al Qatl, rampant killing. People will be killing each other, not knowing why and where, and they will be killing each other. It's just rampant killing. Rawahul Bukhari wa Muslim. Waqala Nabi sallallahu And this is happening in Muslim world and the non Muslim world. Thousands and thousands of people are dying, and this haraj. وَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم, The Prophet وسلم, said, وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِي I swear by the one in whose hand is my life, لَا تَذْهَبُ الدُّنْيَا The world will not end حَتَّى يَمُرَّ الرَّجُلُ عَلَى الْقَبَرِ Until a man will, will pass by a grave فَيَتَمَرَّهُ عَلَيْهِ And he will lie on the grave. And he will go, uh, he will start, uh, uh, he will start rolling on the grave. Why? And he will say, Ya Laytani, I wish, Kuntu makana sahiba hadha al-qabr. I wish I was in place of this person who is buried here. وَلَيْسَ بِهِ الدِّينِ إِلَّا الْبَلَى It is not because he doesn't, uh, uh, he, it is not because of religion that he wants to be in akhirah and he wants to be in the grave. Because the world is so much filled with trouble, with, with problems, that the people who are in the world, they're wishing that they would be dead by now. It would have been, it would be better to be under the grave than to be above the grave. Rawah Muslim. وَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم, will end in five minutes, inshallah. The Prophet وسلم, said, يُوشِكُوا أَنْ يَأْتِي عَلَى النَّاسِ زَمَانٌ Soon a time will come upon people لَا يَبْقَى مِنَ الْإِسْلَامِ إِلَّا إِسْمُ That nothing will be left from true Islam except its name. وَلَا يَبْقَى مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ إِلَّا رَسْمُ And nothing will be left from Qur'an except its words. مَسَاجِدُهُمْ عامرة. And the masajid of these people will be all decorated, beautiful. وَهِيَ خراب. But in reality, it's abandoned, it's empty. People don't come to the masjid. وَهِيَ خَرَابٌ مِنَ الْهُدَى And they will be uh, they will be empty and abandoned of guidance, void of guidance. Ulama uhum sharrum, their their scholars, their leaders are evil. Min tahti adim as sama, most evil people under the under the roof of sky. Min indihim takhrul fitna wa fihim taud. From them will appear the fitna, and in them will return the fitna, the trials, the problem. And that, that has been the case uh, when there were uh, dictators, there were kings and all that. Uh, they were always supported by some evil scholars. And those evil scholars, they would rubber stamp everything that they would do. And that's happening in, the, you know, I don't want to say it, but in Egypt. Mm. In Egypt, we find the same situation. This guy, you know, or any government, there's always scholars from Azhar. And they're always standing behind, whether they're killing people or uh, oppressing people, whatever they're doing, these scholars are always there. Oh, no, no, these are right. They're right. And no matter who the leader is, these scholars are always there. And these, these are the scholars that uh, Rasulullah sallallahu said, وَعَلَمَاءُهُمْ شَرٌ مِنْ تَحْتِ أَدِيمَ السَّرَةِ You said you don't want to say it, but you said it. <laughs> Number 11 Number 11 Near the end of time There will be people There will be friends of each other In the public And there will be enemies of each other 
in, in secrecy, in privacy. Ya Rasulullah, wa dari? The Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, how is going to happen that they are friends of each other when they're in the public and they're enemies of each other when they are in, in closed doors? It will be due to their interest uh, of some towards the other. So they're interested with each other in some things. And they're scared of each other in some things. Rawahu Ahmad. وَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ The Prophet ﷺ said, يَذْهَبُ الصَّالِحُونَ الْأَوَّلْ فَالْأَوَّلْ The good people, the righteous people, the pious people will leave this world one by one. وَالتَّبْقَى حُفَالَةٌ And what will be left behind is like the foam, like the, the foam of ocean. كَحُفَالَةِ الشَّعِيرِ وَالتَّمْرُ Like the, like the uh, leftover of uh, Joe and Barley. Barley and uh, dates. So th they will be like the uh, leftover, like the bad part that nobody wants to buy, that nobody wants to claim, nobody wants to take. So the people who will be left behind, they will be the, the lower uh, degraded and disgraced people. لا يباليهم الله بالا And Allah will not care about them. وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لا تقوم الساعة حتى يكون أسعد الناس بالدنيا لقع ابن لقع. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said that the the final hour will not come until the most fortunate people, the most fortunate of all people in this dunya, in this world, will be لقع the son of لقع. What is لقع? The disgraced person and the son of disgraced person. So. Uh, the father was a really bad person and the son is also a really bad person but two people they're the most fortunate people because they have a lot of money so money determines the status in this world and that's what the Prophet ﷺ predicted it does know so. huh? it does know yeah, right? yeah. alright inshallah so we'll take a break uh, for Salat al-Zuhur and uh, for lunch inshallah and we'll return to the class at 1.30 inshallah a question. I have a few questions. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what about a, a drawing? To draw, what is it permissible to draw? Are you permissible to draw animals? You can draw uh, anything that that doesn't have life, like trees, uh, stars, skies, earth, mountains. You're not allowed to draw animals. Animals, yeah. But trees uh, have But life? another thing is, you can draw. You can draw animals as well, but don't draw the face completely. So what the scholars have said, this is technical, that if you draw something and it's missing something that the, the life cannot stand without, then it's permissible. Like if you don't have the neck or if you don't have the head, then nothing can survive without the head. Right, right. So then it's permissible. But trees are alive too? Not in the sense that we're talking about. They're not animate objects. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. All right, inshallah. So we'll return uh, at 1 30. You can have lunch now or you can have lunch after Salah Zohar. right? Yeah, no, no, 1 o'clock. No, 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 no. In prison, you know, uh, according to the Hanafi, uh, there is no Jumu'ah in prison because it's not open for everybody. One of the conditions of uh, Jumu'ah is Idnul Al. Yeah, it has to be open for permission. Anybody can come, but in prison, nobody can come except the people in the prison. So that's why there is no Jumu'ah for people in uh, prison. Yeah. And the other, other, more importantly, the other excuse is if a person who means Juma is a wrong person, then you don't care. You just throw it off. Hey, yeah, did you talk to Haneem? And it's all down at the end against him. They think he'll be on that side. It's all prison over here. Yeah. All right. Allah.